Hi guys, I'm, my name's Chris Baines and I'm one of the engineers on the Android Developer Relations team and I'm the main guy who's wrote Action Bar Compact. So Action Bar Compact was released early last week as part of the new, a, new, a new support library as part of version 18 um, and it allows you to add a compatible Action Bar to your application all the way back to API version 7, so that's Android 2.1. Now it's pretty easy to add. There are two ways we support. The first is via Gradle. So it's been added as part of the Android support repository, which is part of the SDK, um, which means it's a one-line change to your build.gradle to have it all included. Or we also support it as a library project, so you can do it the old-fashioned way of adding it as a dependency in IntelliJ. So how you actually integrate into your application, there are two parts, really. The first bit, your resources, so your styles. So there are three styles we include in Action Bar Compact. Um, theme.atcompat, atcompat.light, and then the dark action bar one. Now, each of these mirror a hollow theme. So if you're using hollow.light.actionbar, just replace it with the atcompat app version. Pretty easy, really. But the thing is, most applications don't do that. They have big, complex styles like this. Well, that's not even complex. That's just one action bar style with a slightly different background. So how we do it with atcompat is that you need to double set each attribute. Once in the Android namespace, so for ICS and above, and then again in the default namespace, so that's for AppCompat itself. And your styles always need to have an AppCompat parent. So here we've changed the parent to have theme.AppCompat.light, and we've double set the attribute Android.ActionBarStyle, and again in default style. Exactly the same value, you just need to make sure you double set each one. The second type of resource you need to change your menus. Now, as with sort of the standard action bar and ICS and above, or Honeycomb and above, um, all your items are added via the options menu. So here's an ICS type options menu. We have your action view class, which is a search view, and it's set to show as action always. Now, for AppCompat, I've had to change a few things. Because some of those attributes aren't available all the way back to Android 2.1, we've actually had to include them into AppCompat, and you have to reference them instead. So it's pretty easy. Any of your action view attributes, which you set, so action view class, action provider class, show as action, action view layout. Make sure you now use the app compat namespace. That's two rules really and it's pretty easy. There will also be some link rules coming arriving in the next, well, not the next one, but in a future version of Android Studio which will make this even easier. So that's the resources and you look at your code. So all your activities need to extend from a new class called action bar activity. Um, it provides a pretty similar API to that available, which you're used to in ICS and above. To get an action bar, you call get support action bar, which is exactly the same cause in action bar Sherlock. Um, start support action mode, and that starts an action mode, contextual action bar. Um, and the actual API on both of those objects are the same as what you're used to. You can add tabs, change the navigation mode, all the usual stuff. So as I said earlier, how you add actually items to your action bar, you inflate your menu, and here we have an example where we're trying to get the search view back. Now, the action view methods were added in Honeycomb, so we can't use them or can't use them reliably um, across all the versions that we support. So we've added, the, added this menu item compat class, um, which is the same as all the other v4 support classes where it's a static method. You pass your item through, and it will do all the hard work for you in a safe way. And with your fragments, unlike Action Bar Sherlock, you can continue using your standard v4 fragment. Uh, nothing has changed in this respect. Exactly the same as before, you call set has options menu in your onCreate, um, and then your onCreate options menu and onPrepare options menu will be called as normal. Nothing has changed here. So the reason why I whizzed through that lot was because that's all in the dev bite, which I released a week ago. So if you've missed anything in that, have a look at that. Um, so all this going on now is new stuff, which I wrote today. So to have a split action bar in App Compat, um, you add these two attributes. So the first one, Android UI options, was added in, in ICS. So that is for ICS and above. But you want to support also devices going back to 2.1. So you have to add this metadata element to each activity which you want to have a split action bar. Now you could theoretically not include this one and just have that. But that's not guaranteed to work in the future. 
So as I said earlier, we've included a, a back port of search view. Um, you can look back at the code in the previous slides for how you actually do it. But you need to be careful we've set searchable info. Um, Compact works all the way back to version 2.1, but searchable info was a class added in 2.2. So you'll get um, verifier errors if you actually try and use the method. Um, just be careful, basically. Um, you can use an onquery text listener, I think it's called, to actually mimic it. Um, same with ShareX from Vida, there's a backport available. Just use it as you would the standard one in framework. Um, and you use it, action provider class, in your menu item. It's exactly the same API. I don't want to teach you too much. And there we go, there's the code. It's just called get action provider with the menu item compact static method. We add, we've added a back port of pop-up menu, so you can use that as much as you want now. Now you should really be using this as a real hollow type design, because it, there's a lot of apps at the moment using sort of quick actions, and they're using like sort of the honeycomb backgrounds, it just looks really bad. Um, this is a nice way of being able to provide a contextual sort of menu for a list item or a grid item. Now you just, it's all in code, so you just create a pop-up menu, you give it your menu that you want to inflate, along with a listener to actually find out what's clicked. Um, Action Bar Combat has automatic support for Action Board Draw Toggle. So if you're using Draw Layout, then it all works A-OK. -okay. <laughs> um, you just give it your activity, and it all works. So this is actually an Action Bar activity. Um, again, there's, there's not much here. It's just sample code from the actual Action Bar Draw Toggle Layout sample. Progress bars, we support progress bars. Um, you call support request window feature, give it the feature you want. Um, there are a number of methods which we've added to actually turn them on and off and make them visible. Um, set support progress indeterminate visible, which is a really long method now. Um, there's also set support progress, set support progress visibility indeterminate, or something. There's, just, there's four methods, and they're all named really similar. Luckily, they're Java doc. Right, and session navigation. So this is the big thing which I really tried to add into Outcome Pat because it's something that not a lot of apps are using properly, really. Um, so in Jelly Bean 4.1, we added sort of automatic support for this. Um, there are a number of methods call added which you can override and change. Um, but I wanted to backport it all the way back to 2.1. So in each activity, so sorry, so, and session navigation, another name that is up navigation. So it's the up carrot. So in Jelly Bean 4.1, you can add this parent activity name and give it a reference to what your, whatever your activity is, your parent activity. Then whenever the user clicks the up carrot, it will automatically go back to it. Um, now for, all, for support all the way back to 2.1, we've had to add a met another metadata tag. So you just add that to your activity, pointing it to whatever the parent activity is, and it will work. You just need to make sure that you call set display home is enabled so it actually displays. Um, so that will give you basic up navigation. But if you want to go invo more involved and more advanced and change what, how it actually works, um, here's how it works, basically. So these are all the methods that get called as soon as the user press, clicks home. So I'm going to go through them and show you how you can actually override them. So user clicks home. So what's the first thing that's called? It's on support navigate up. So that's a method in action bar activity which you can override and change how you want. Um, so there are two things that method does. First thing it does, it, it calls get support parent activity intent. Now, what that will do, that will return whatever you've included in your manifest. So basically, it'll look at the manifest, look what you've put, and then make an intent based upon it. Um, as long as that's not null, it'll carry on, and it will call support up recreate task. Now, what that will do, that will check whether you are currently in a different task to whatever your parent is. So how that can happen is um, if your parent is, comes from a different application. So if you've been, say, gallery has opened you up and you press back and you go back to the gallery app, that'll be in a different task. So if it's false, so you're in the same task, same application, it will just call support navigate up with the intent and then your parent activity is started. If it's true, so you're in a different task, um, it will make up a task stack. So that method will be called, giving it a task stack. Then on prepare, support, navigate, up, start, and then it will finally create the task. So this will allow you to basically create 
specialized tasks up if you cross sort of task back borders. And there's a lot of documentation on all types of stuff, and I'm going to make another dev bite as well to really explain this. Finally, Action Bar Style Generator has added support for App Compact, and that happened last week. Um, woo! And that's it. Any questions? I'm a bit hot. I know it's hot, so I'll kind of whiz through it really quickly. No questions? Oh, go on. I knew this question was going to come up. <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, the lady asked, are there any advantages over using Action Bar Sherlock? Um, the ancestral navigation stuff is the main thing, which I really try to force in. Another thing is that you use the standard menu item classes. So you don't, Action Bar Sherlock added its own menu item, own menu.